My name is DJ Swivel, and on this episode of Storytime, I'm going to be sharing with you how I first met Jay-Z, what that was like, and how it may have changed my entire career. Stay tuned. My name is DJ Swivel, and today on Storytime, I'm going to be sharing a story about how I first met Jay-Z. But before I do, uh, I just want to wish my Raptors uh, a lot of luck in the bubble, I guess, in the new NBA offseason. I'm repping for my team. It's about to start. So, uh, you know, hope you guys are repping for your teams and I uh, thought I'd just put that out there. I don't get to visit Toronto very often, so I got to rep when I can while I'm here in L.A. Um, but anyways, so this story is about how I first met Jay-Z. Um, and there's actually a really important lesson to be learned from it. Um, so this happens very early in my career in 2006. Now, I should preface this story with I am a huge Jay-Z fan. Um, I first uh, discovered his music. Um, it wasn't Reasonable Doubt. It was Volume 1 in my lifetime. And then when Volume 2 dropped, uh, Hard Knock Life, it was like, it was all I listened to for a whole year, pretty much. Um, and, you know, sort of the, the irony or in the serendipitous nature of that is that I eventually landed an internship with Duro who mixed Hard Knock Life. So... Um, you know, who would have thunk it, but, um, you know, the first time I ever saw Jay-Z in person was actually, uh, you know, just going to, I went to the Hard Knock Life tour, uh, in Toronto. I think it was at the, I want to say it was at the Sky Dome, um, which is now the, I guess, Scotia Bank Center. Um, but, uh, it would have been, I guess, maybe 1998. And, um, who was on that tour? It was like Method Man and Red Man, DMX, and then Jay-Z and kind of the whole Rockefeller crew. So, uh, I remember that was one of my favorite concerts I ever went to growing up. And it, it just made me sort of, uh, like, you know, Jay's music even more. And, um, sort of all that leads to actually meeting him in person. So, uh, so fast forward, uh, I'm doing my internship. Uh, actually, this is, I'm still kind of interning, but I, I had just started uh, recording Fabulous. I was his engineer. And at the time, this is uh, 2006, and this meeting happened, I'm, I want to say in October of 2006. Uh, Jay-Z was the president of Def Jam Records, which was Fabulous's label. And he was also planning his comeback. So he uh, he had if you know the story of Jay-Z's career, he did his first retirement after the Black Album in 2003. He took a job with uh, Def Jam as the president of Def Jam Records. Uh, and then he decided to have a musical comeback uh, in, I think, 2006 uh, with his album Kingdom Come. Okay, so uh, we're all at Sony Studios. Uh, we're finishing Fabulous's album. And in, a, in an earlier video I had mentioned, Sony Studios was like the place to be in New York City if you were a recording artist. Everybody worked there. I remember one day I was at, in, in Sony Studios and in my room it was me, Swiss Beats, Pharrell, uh, Kanye, and, um, and Duro. Like, I wish I had a photo of that moment because when, when does that happen? But like my three producer idols are like in the room with me. It was incredible. So anyways, the, the point of that is that Sony studios, everybody worked there. And so of course, Jay-Z was finishing his album at Sony studios in one room. And we're in another room at Sony studios, finishing Fab's album. So, uh, we're wrapping up the album and we need to play the record for the president of Fab's label, Jay-Z, and he happens to be at Sony. So we schedule some time. When I say we, uh, Duro and Clue and, and everybody else involved, they, they sort it out. I'm just the recording engineer. I'm just told where to go and, and what to do. So um, I'm told we're going to go play the album for Jay and get his feedback and, and see what he thinks. So uh, so we're, we're in, I think it was like Studio D. Uh, I pack up Fab's hard drive. Uh, and we walk down the hall, maybe 50 feet to the room that Jay's in. 
Now I have to say, I'm incredibly nervous, uh, but I was always sort of the consummate professional when I was working. I never once asked for a photo with an artist. That's why you won't see many photos of me with artists. Um, Cause I always felt like that was something a fan would do. And you know, I'm there to do a job and I want to do my job at the highest ability. And so, you know, I really tried hard to not let on that I was like a big fan and I couldn't believe I was in the room. I'm sure people knew, but, um, but I always just try to be uh, very professional about it. So, uh, so I walk in the room, cool, just following, following kind of, you know, the lead of everyone else who does actually know Jay and has worked with him before and spent time around him. Uh, and I basically am just quiet. I'm just doing what I'm told. So I go in, I sit down at the computer, I hook up the hard drive uh, because we need to play uh, the music and we want to, of course, play it through the, the big speakers in the studio. So I hook up the hard drive, I sit down at the computer, I have Fab sitting next to me um, and Jay-Z's kind of about uh, 10 feet away in a chair over here, uh, Duro standing on the wall, Clue is there, Skane is there, and a bunch of uh, Jay's crew was there. I don't recall who it all was. I think maybe Tata was there, uh, Lenny S, and, and a, a few other friends. So there's maybe about 10 or 15 people in the room. And uh, we just start playing the album. Fab will tell me, play song number four, and I'll play that one. And then play song number seven, and I'll play that one. So... Um, I go through the whole process and we play the album and everyone's nodding their heads and like, you know, Jay's like, you know, bouncing and, um, you know, giving a little bit of uh, feedback or whatever, but generally likes the album, uh, happy with it. And, uh, and so we're, we're good to go. So we did our job. We played him the record uh, and then we start packing up and leaving. So at this point, I start packing up the hard drive. As I'm doing that, everyone else is going through the room and like, you know, shaking hands or dapping, uh, you know, their friends and the people who they know and basically just saying, you know, thanks for the time and we're out. So I, of course, follow the lead. So I, you know, shake everyone's hand. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the time. <laughs> and I get to Jay. And I don't know why I get to Jay and I, I just say, you know, thank you. And he stops me and he puts his hand on my shoulder. And he's like, you did a really great job today. Thank you. And he looked me right in my eyes and said that one little sentence. And that changed everything for me because he didn't have to do that. I was just the recording engineer. I didn't even need to speak to him. I didn't say a word to him the whole time I was in the room. But he stopped because he could tell how excited I was to be in the room. Um, he could tell I was being professional. And, you know, I've met Jay a number of times, worked with him a number of times since then, and he's always been the coolest person in the room. He can read a room incredibly well, know what everyone is thinking, and he knows how to make everyone feel welcome. And that's like a quality that I'm constantly trying to get better at and learn. It's a very difficult quality to, to uh, acquire. And I think that's one of the reasons, among talent and hard work and these other things, one of the reasons why he's done so well. Because he's very good at reading a room and making sure that everyone in the room uh, is glad that he's there. You know, that, that he makes sure that they feel welcome, that they feel important, and that they feel acknowledged. And so that was that little moment where he acknowledged me. And, you know, uh, 14 years later now, um, it's still, I still carry that with me. It still resonates with me. And so that just goes to show how little effort it takes to plant that seed, uh, to allow somebody to, to go on and be successful. And you know, my, my, it, you hear stories of people, they meet their hero and it's a horrible meeting and whatever. And, and, you know, I've really modeled my career after Jay. He really is one of, one of the people who I look up to and, and, um, uh, you know, and when I say modeled my career, modeled it in the sense that I started in a, in a creative field and I've gone on to do other business ventures that leverage my uh, creative field. And sort of, I admire Jay for his music, but as much for that as I do for 
his you know business acumen and, and the deals he's done and, and the businesses he's gone into and, and uh, created. So, um, so getting that that little bit of acknowledgement from him meant the world, and I still carry it with me. And I guess the lesson uh, in this whole thing is is really try to lift up the people around you. Um, you know, you're not going to get it right every time, but I always try when somebody sends me a message on Instagram or. Um, if I'm going and speaking on a panel and uh, people want to stop and ask me questions after or take a photo or whatever, um, I really do always try to make that time because you never know. That person who you sit down with now and answer a question or shake their hand or uh, take a photo, they may be the next big producer. They may be the next big artist and so you don't want to really alienate anybody. And you have, I sort of have to remind myself all the time uh, but you know, it's a really good lesson that he taught me and, uh, that really allowed me to change the way that I act around people, uh, especially in the studio. And I think that has certainly contributed to some of my success, just that little lesson that I learned there. So anyways, uh, that's the story for this week, uh, how I first met Jay and, um, yeah, hopefully you can take that lesson with you and, and, and use that in your own uh, career fields. I don't think it applies just to music. I think it applies to everything. So, uh, till next time, this is DJ Swivel. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in two weeks. Peace.